everyone, I'm Sarah Bell Reed and welcome back to another video. Some of you might know that I am hugely inspired by the work of electroacoustic music pioneer Pauline Oliveros. And I was recently rereading her book, which is called Deep Listening, a Composer's Sound Practice. I'll leave a link to the book below in the description of this video. And I came across this passage that talks about focal versus global attention. Focal attention, like a lens, produces clear detail limited to the object of attention. Global attention is diffuse and continually expanding to take in the whole of the space-time continuum of sound. And then a little bit further down the page, there's a section about sending and receiving. If you are speaking, singing, performing with an instrument, or otherwise sounding, then you are sending. Are you receiving what you send and also receiving the whole of the space-time continuum of sound? So, I had an idea for a collaboration that's a little bit unusual, and I contacted Heimbach, Helen Vogelsinger, and Tim Held to ask if they might be interested and willing to participate in this with me. Everyone said yes, so here we are. So the idea behind this project is that four musicians in four very different parts of the world would all come together to create a collaborative track. But the catch with all of this is that each musician records in isolation. So they can't hear or see the other musicians. Not only that, but there's no pre-planning, no discussion, no choosing a key or a tempo or anything like that. Instead of connecting to one another over a video or audio network, the idea behind this project is to really come back to the basics and to tap into our listening and our creative imagination as the only way of linking us together across time and across space. I sent each participant a small block of text that shared some of my thoughts about global and focal attention, about imaginative listening, and I simply asked them to respond to these prompts in absolutely any way that felt best to them. The only other detail that we discussed in advance was to use a particular instrument somehow in your setup, which was the Make Noise Strega. The idea behind this was simply to give us one unifying element, but the precise way in which you use the Strega or in what combination you use it with other instruments was left completely open-ended. All right, so now that you have some background as to how this project unfolded, it's time to take a look and a listen at what everyone did. We'll start by hearing everyone's individual layer for the project, and then I will composite everything together so we can hear the complete piece. Hi Sarah, and thanks for having me. What I imagined when I played this were two things. The first is breath. It's the thing you have to do before you can start to communicate. So I wanted these sounds to sound a bit like breath, which is why I used all these bandpass filters and gave them this little, yeah, airy and breathy sound. And then I wanted it to sound like all the lost communications that happen, all the stuff that is filtered out that doesn't get heard. 
and therefore the stragger was used as the delay and the filter was also a bit active and I routed it in a way that what I was playing would influence the, what's that called? The absorb. And that created a lively patch that I could then process further. And to get that feeling of broken communications, I also added in a bunch of lock and amplifiers and scientific amplifiers that just sound gorgeous because yeah, they have a way of breaking up that I love. And when I was playing, I basically played two things, the bass and the mixing board with all the filters. And in regards to what I played, I felt I wanted to listen to the echo, play with that, of course, as you do. But then I wanted to give it a circle. So I played this circle motif that is only cut up by like these breaks. So for some reason I thought a circle would be nice for this project. I'm looking forward to what you're going to do with this. This has been a pleasure. Bye bye. For this session, I had the will to communicate with the ocean, to translate my human frequencies into my perception of the ocean one. So in this patch, I used the Strega as an effect processor for my voice. I patched my preamp to the external substance input of the Strega. I then wanted to use the strength out of the Strega to control different parameters, so I sent it to a multiplier. I then directly patch the first copy into the Time Unity CV input of the Strega. The two other copies, I uh, send them into a mixer to have a bit more control, and I patch them into the activation and tones CV inputs. I finally patched the output of the Strega into the herb verb. During the session, what I did was outputting the herb verb into an, my external mixer to have a bit more control on volume, EQ, etc. And then I patched the external mixer into the STS to record. So here is my well patch. I really wanted to focus on the singing, so I did not turn a lot of knobs this time. What is really important in this patch is the interpretation, the strength of the voice, and suddenly the Strega becomes a translator. Human, 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 Like a dork, 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 dork. Uh, hi, I'm Tim Held hi, I'm Tim from Held. Podular Modcast. Hi, Sarah, Sarah Bell Reed asked, asked me to uh, Reed collaborate on a track collaborate. with her uh, using the Strega. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run some uh, field recordings. 
through the Strega. So uh, today's my birthday, and my wife Hannah said that I could do whatever I wanted for my birthday. And she loves recording stuff out in the field as well. So I thought we'd go to my favorite spots in Seattle and record the beautiful nature and the beautiful sounds that we can find. Maybe not so beautiful. So. Um, and uh, run those through the Strega and see what happens. So uh, let's do it. All right, so what I think I'm gonna be doing for my layer is using Strega primarily as an audio processor for my trumpet. I picked my piccolo trumpet because it has the highest register of all of the horns that I have. And it sounds really beautiful, not only when you're playing full voiced, but also when you're playing all of the more unusual kind of internal trumpet sound. So when you close mic this horn and then you run it through something like Strega to put a delay on it and uh, some filtering, it starts to take on a whole life of its own and it sounds really beautiful. Now at this point, I have not listened to any of the tracks that have been sent over to me by the other people in this project. So I have no idea what things sound like or what direction they went in. For some reason, as I was patching up and preparing for this recording, I kept imagining a kind of call and response type gesture. Maybe something with really long echoes, uh, like you're standing at the edge of a huge canyon or inside of a, you know, a massive cavern or something like that. So. I think that that's the direction I'm going to go. I am running my piccolo trumpet into Strega and I'm using the envelope follower on the input of Strega to do some delay modulation. And I'm also patching the uh, subharmonic oscillator output on Strega into the filter modulation input to do some filter modulation. And I'm using the zero control to occasionally activate some uh, some synthesized tones from Strega's sound generator from the oscillator and to also modulate the speed of this cycling envelope or LFO inside of Strega, which is being used to modulate the um, absorb amount.
Okay, so I have been working on editing this track together and there are so many amazing little synchronicities between all of the tracks. What I've been doing is just working on positioning the tracks relative to one another, balancing uh, some levels and doing really simple mixing. Um, I'm not, you know, tuning anything or repitching anything and yet we are ending up with these melodies and these harmonies that are just working so beautifully with one another. So this is super exciting. If you want to check out the full track that came out of this collaboration, it's going to be released over on Bandcamp. And 100% of the proceeds from that release are going to be donated to the Girls Rock Camp Alliance, which is an international network of youth-centered arts and social justice organizations. They provide space and support and resources for community building and arts education all over the world. In addition to the group track, the release is also going to include each collaborator's individual layer, so you can listen to those as well. I'll leave a link to the Bandcamp page where you can listen to all of this below. All right, so I want to extend a very deep, tremendous thank you to these amazing collaborators, Heinbach, Ellen Vogelsinger, and Tim Held. Thank you for your willingness to jump into this experiment with me, and thank you for your beautiful, thoughtful music. And thanks to all of you for listening and watching once again. That's all for today, and I'll see you next time. Bye.